Hi, this is Austin with Brush for Hire, and I wanted to take a look at another codex with you today. Now, this one I am a lot more familiar with. I've had a chance to look over it, uh, so hopefully I won't make any mistakes and I won't omit things that you guys are just going to scream about. Um, hopefully this will be helpful, informative, and uh, probably a little less biased than last time. Um, the last codex that I reviewed was... Uh, the unfortunately named uh, Codex Legion of the Damned, I think that it should have been a, uh, a supplement at best. The Imperial Knight Codex represents a new addition of super heavy walkers, or titans, into the 40k meta. These are coming into uh, the game under the control of the Imperial armies uh, and have a variety of options for allying with various factions and flavors of the Imperium. The two loadouts that this codex brings to the field are the Knight Paladin and the Knight Errant. The difference between the two is that the Knight Paladin has a battle cannon much like the ones that are mounted onto Imperial Guard Lehman Russes. They just have two shots instead of one and everything else is the same. And the Knight Errant has a giant melta cannon called a thermal cannon. It's a 36 inch range, which is quite nice for Melta. Strength 9, AP 1, and it's still Melta, but it's a large blast, which is fantastic for frying uh, big groups of small vehicles like uh, land speeders or anything else that actually has armor value. If you can get close to it uh, within 18 inches, you'll be able to just annihilate anything under that template. As for special rules and war gear, each one of them has two heavy stubbers, plus their main weapon, which is different between the two, a reaper chain sword, and an ion shield. We'll get to those in just a second. In the special rules section, they have fear, hammer of wrath, invincible behemoth, move through cover, relentless smash, and strike down. So, as for the war gear, you have two heavy stubbers. That's pretty standard stuff. If you've ever played Imperial Guard, you know what they are. Um, the other main guns we just talked about, the reaper chain sword is a close combat weapon, that strikes uh, AP2 strength D. So anything that is hit is just removed, is just wounded and dead. The ion shield is an extra invulnerable save that they get, but it only covers one facing per turn. It must be declared each turn, so you can have it rotate. So whichever side you think more enemies are going to be firing from or heavier weapons, you can switch over your invulnerable save quarter shield to that side. The only two special rules in that set that I was really unfamiliar with until I read a little bit more uh, were Strike Down and Unstoppable Behemoth. Now you may say, Austin, uh, those were in the main rule book in the special rules section, but I just didn't ever see them because I haven't played any models that have them. The Strike Down special rule, um, actually any models that are hit but uh, successfully save against uh, any wounds done by by this model are uh, knocked off their feet. When in game terms, that means that they have half of their normal initiative and they move as though they're in dangerous terrain for the next turn. And uh, the other special rule, um, Invincible Behemoth, essentially means that any time a result would come up that would say, okay, uh, you're your vehicle explodes or it is destroyed or removed from the game for some reason. Instead of doing that, it just takes D3 uh, hull points, uh, which this model, each, each of these models have six. For those of you who want to field a primary detachment of knights, you're obviously going to need some warlord traits to go with that warlord. In this book, you've got six pretty good uh, warlord traits. I think that some of them are better than others. Uh, the first one is Master of the Hunt, which gives you a plus one to rolls on run and charge. So you get one extra inch for running and charging. So that's nice. You can get in a little bit further uh, when charging an enemy. The second one is Fearsome Reputation. This forces all enemy units within 12 inches of the Warlord to use their lowest leadership in their unit. So unlike normally, where the Sergeant would confer his leadership 9 onto the rest of his men, which are leadership 8, you are now forced to use leadership 8 when you're making tests. Third one is Master of the Joust, uh, which is re-rolls on uh, failed assault attacks. Um, as long as they get into combat, they re-roll failed ones. Uh, one, one time, not just constantly to you all. Yeah, you guys know. I'm just talking. The fourth one is Master of the Field. Now, this one allows the Warlord and up to D3 other Titans to outflank. So that's pretty sweet. 
Uh, they're you know, giant hulking machines, and the closer you can put them to their final destination, uh, the better. Number five is Master of the Siege. So you get plus one to any results that you roll on the uh, building damage table. So they're just much better at punching through buildings and walls and taking them all down. And lastly, a really pretty sweet one is Indomitable, which just gives the Warlord it will not die. So you have the opportunity to keep regenerating hull points as the game goes on. So hopefully with some lucky rolls, that Warlord does not go down. For those of you who want to run these with other armies as allies, uh, it'll be good to know what you can take them with. So it looks like they're going to be Battle Brothers with the Sisters of Battle, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Imperial Guard, Inquisition, Legion of the Damned, Space Marines, and Space Wolves. So that's pretty much all just a ton of Imperial stuff. Um, as far as Allies of Convenience, we have the Eldar, the uh, Grey Knights, and that is all for that. Uh, the Desperate Ally section is also pretty slim. The uh, Dark Eldar and Tau are Desperate Allies, so you're not going to be having any really successful um, you know, Tau-Titan combos, uh, which I think is pretty good. I think that the Tau got the, um, they got the big end of the stick uh, when it came to allies real early on. They got lots of, uh, lots of uh, nice Imperial allies and access to pretty much everything in the Space Marine Codex, just to do whatever they wanted with. Um, those that were left out that are labeled as Come the Apocalypse are uh, both Chaos Armies, Chaos Demons and Chaos Space Marines. And uh, Necrons, Orcs, and Tyranids, obviously, they don't get any allies at all. Um, the only one that I will question on that is I would really have liked to see them um, as Battle Brothers with, um, with Chaos Space Marines. And I know that you're going to say, no, that sounds dumb, but that would open up the avenue for conversions for, um, you know, traitor titan legions um i know this probably wasn't the intent of this book so i'm going to give them a pass i'm not you know flipping out about it or anything but i think that it could have been really fun i mean you've got uh essentially uh the ability to take them as as a a traitor um titan now i bet they're going to come out with another book that is sort of chaos titan versions of this and they're going to have another model uh, but as you know, we talked about in the last one, Games Workshop, because of because reasons, uh, they don't make models or they don't make rules for models they don't have. Uh, because uh, mostly the the whole debacle with them and um, Chapter House Studios, uh, they 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 didn't lose their shirt or anything, but they uh, they certainly got a slap on the wrist for trying to be a little too greedy on on uh, IP rules i don't know anyway so i'm sure that that'll that'll come out when there's a, a model to actually represent it uh, but in the meantime i bet i bet that people would let you ally them um and just say look i'm really i really am excited about these titans i want to do a a traitor like chaos titan so i i don't know unless unless you're playing in a tournament if this is just a casual game i've i mean i've even seen uh folks doing the uh the conversions already so I know that they're out there and I'm sure that there are people who are letting them play with them. Lastly one of the aspects of this codex that I haven't heard anybody talk about yet uh, is the knightly ranks. Now there are there are various ranks of of pilots I guess or or knight titans. I assume that it's the skill of the the pilot that they're really focusing on here. It seems to be an optional rule that you can use whether they are allies or your primary detachment but it allows you to have something of a little bit of variation, a little bit more character with your your knights. So for each one of them in your army, if you decide to use these optional rules, uh, because it even says uh, if you would like to include them, you can, um, you can essentially have a variation um, and you, it's kind of a gamble. Um, it is a, is a roll of the dice uh, on a d6, a 1, you actually lose a weapon skill and a ballistic skill, and your invulnerable save is a 5 up instead of a 4. So that's a pretty nasty hit. Um, 2 to 5, you are just a standard knight. So all of the rules across the board are exactly the same. Um, and on 6, uh, in the exact opposite fashion of the, the first rank, uh, so that the number one is knight apparent, uh, two to five is just a regular knight, 
and then the six is a Sinchal. Um, Sen Sen Sinchal? If you manage to roll a six on these rolls, uh, you will get a plus one to the weapon skill and ballistic skill, and in addition, the ion shield will be a three up in Vault save. So it's literally the opposite. You either uh, lose a point from your ballistic skill, weapon skill, and the value of your ion shields, or you get a boost, a plus one to each one of those things if you roll a six. So there's your gamble. Most of the time you're gonna fall in the middle and uh, you'll you'll just have a, a normal vanilla knight army. Uh, but uh, for casual games, I think it would be kind of fun uh, to have a, a little bit of, of a, a difference there. And maybe even if you don't want to take the chance, you'd say, hey opponent, uh, could I take one of them as a knight apparent and one of them as a sinchal, just to see how they function, see how drastically different, um, just so that it's not all super duper random. So now for my overall opinion. Um, number one, I think that it is important to know uh, that this this army probably will not function very well as a uh, as a an only primary detachment. Uh, if you wanted to take it as your primary detachment and then ally with something else, so you wanted to take three knights and have one of them be your warlord, definitely ally with with something else. Um, take something where you're you're gonna have um, some weight of fire because while these guys are really great. Uh, even one of them being taken out is going to, to be a massive loss. So you've got to have something there to help you recover. I would not put all of my eggs in a six titan basket. The next subject I'd like to address is the price. Is this codex worth it? I think that you're going to have to figure that out for your yourself. Uh, do you want to play with pretty awesome looking giant robots? Uh, do you mind paying $40 for a book that only contains two models and the the rules of them. I think this is falling into a very similar niche as the uh, Legion of the Damned Codex, where you have very few options. You, you literally only have two options in this Codex. There's not even really any war gear that you can take with them. Uh, it's the standard loadouts, and that's it. I, I said yes. I bought it um, not just because I wanted to do a review on it and to, to check out the, the new shiny toys, uh, but also, I really love giant robots. And on top of that, uh, as much as I feel like the fluff should not be the selling point or the excuse for the price of the Codex, um, I think that the fluff in this one was worth it. Uh, to a degree, I didn't read all of it, but it seemed like it was going in a, a nice direction. You had lots of interesting historical stuff to help you flavor uh, your army to, to something that could be canon. Also, lots and lots of artwork. This book is one of the first ones that actually reminded me of a Forge World book uh, in that you had tons and tons of pages and sections on heraldry and on color schemes and on uh, just general markings and, and the convention of how these things looked in the 40k universe, which I absolutely love. Now, on to playability. Like I said before, uh, I think that these have to be taken with a a detachment of something else. You're just going to have to have some allies of some kind, and you got lots of stuff to pick from. You've got Imperial Guard, you've got Space Marines, you've got lots of other flavors of Space Marines, uh, you've got the Inquisition, uh, you've got just tons of stuff. So find a gameplay style that works for you, and either ally these with them or ally them with these. Um, they are really potent and powerful war machines, and I think that uh, that they are definitely worth trying out. And though I'm not going to go into a full-on review of the models that are represented by this codex, uh, I think that uh, we also need to, to just mention the fact that I think these models look really cool. Now some people have said they look uh, silly or squatty or what have you, and that is perfectly acceptable as an opinion for you to have. Uh, I just personally think they look good, I think there's lots of parts, they're big, they're fun to airbrush, uh, I've actually got one put together now. Uh, they actually fit together really well and even have joints in the shoulders and in the waist uh, that allow you to put them on the board fully assembled looking uh, but still be able to break them down without ever having to magnetize them. So I think that's definitely uh, an excellent way to go uh, for these types of models. Um, and, and definitely uh, a selling point, I think, that Games Workshop did not, um, they didn't really capitalize on. The things are really poseable, 
uh, except for the legs. Basically, anything above the waist is very poseable. Everything below the waist is very not poseable. So uh, there's a pros, uh, pros and cons there. Um, I think overall that I would recommend this to anybody who likes robots. If you love mecha or giant anime robots, now it doesn't look very anime -y, but if you like 40K and you like big robots, this is, this is definitely something to pick up. I kind of wish that I had bought the physical book just because I liked it enough that I wish I had uh, had it on the shelf all the time. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you got some information out of this or uh, some, some points that may have made the difference between you buying it or not buying it, whichever way I convinced you. Um, I, I hope it was helpful. Uh, leave comments in the the, uh, the comment section below about what you think about the codex, if you have it, uh, or if you've um, you've been trying to figure out how to use it best. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, how would you use these robots, uh, the, the Titans, in, in your army? Would you use them as a full uh, primary detachment? Would you use them as allies with something else? Would you ally something with them? Uh, what's, what's the best way to handle this? Or do you think it's a big old load of crap and you think that it's uh, a waste of money and just another... Uh, money grab from GW to get us to pay a bunch of money for the rules for only a handful of models and uh, you know m mediocre fluff. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm trying to to see what you guys uh, have to say because I'm I'm pretty middle of the road on this one. I like the models. I think the codex is okay. Uh, I want to see them on the table, but uh, I also want to know what you think. So uh, leave your comments. Give us a like. It helps a lot. And uh, if subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, there's lots of cool tutorials and other things. Uh, I'm trying to gear up for more videos here recently. I'm sorry for the lack of them uh, over the last couple of months. So uh, take care, and we will see you guys in the next one. Till then, happy wargaming.